Agile World. Please welcome to the stage, Presidential Diamond from Miami Beach, Florida, Randy Gage. Places You'll Go by Dr. Seuss. Congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. You'll look up and down streets, look them over with care. And some of you will say, I don't choose to go there. With your head full of brains and your shoes full of feet, you're too smart to go down any not so good street. Now I'd love to read you the whole book, but we don't have enough time tonight. I'll be uh, picking someone and coming by your room later tonight <laughs> reading you the good night story <laughs> uh, wow Craig got excited about that so that was Dr. Seuss one of the magical authors of all time I don't think you'll find many four or five year olds who don't love the Dr. Seuss books. Here's the fascinating thing for me. I didn't discover Dr. Seuss when I was four or five. I discovered Dr. Seuss when I was 15. And you know why I discovered Dr. Seuss? Because my counselor at school said, you can't enunciate, nobody understands you, you don't speak clearly, you're always looking down at your feet, you're so nervous and you mumble, and this is why you're getting all these bad grades in school. This is why you don't have friends and, and you don't fit in, because you don't know how to enunciate. So we're going to send you to the speech therapist because they thought my problem was enunciation. When you pronounce the words correctly and articulate so people understand the syllables. So I go to the speech therapist at 14 or 15 years old and he teaches me tongue twisters from Dr. Seuss. So I'm probably the only 52-year-old man in the world who can say, when the Beatles fight these battles with their paddles in the puddle and the puddle's in a bottle and the bottle's on a poodle and the poodle's eating noodles, this is what they call. <laughs> Excuse me, Mrs. Sign Language, I don't think you, I don't think you kept up with that. I don't think all of the interpreters kept up with that either. So let's try that again. When the Beatles fight these battles with their paddles in the puddle and the puddles in the bottle and the bottles on a poodle and the poodles eating noodles, this is what they call. <laughs> now, here's what I want you to think about. What was the fairy tale that you grew up with? What was the story that was so special to you? Maybe it was Little Red Riding Hood. Maybe it was Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Whatever it was. But think about the time when you had somebody who read you those stories and you first learned to read yourself. 
and you read those stories and you believed those stories. Because belief is a funny thing. Because when we believe things, they seem to come true. And when we don't believe things, they seem not to work out, don't they? And I want us to explore this whole concept, which is our theme all this weekend. You've heard everybody, Craig and Jeremiah and Kyle and everybody up here has been talking about this one very special word, the word of the weekend, believe. I wrote a blog post about it the other day as I was kind of preparing my thoughts for this speech. I've been thinking about this for a couple of months, what I wanted to share on this special night that I had a little bit of time to spend with you. And so I wrote about the, the amazing power that belief has upon us. Think about somebody who joins Agile and they believe. They believe that this is magical. They believe these products are amazing. They believe this compensation plan is bulletproof. They believe the corporate team we have and the field leadership we have, the people behind this company are so amazing. They go out and they qualify for President's Club in five days. Think about Mexico. <laughs> Think about this. You got Daphne and Alberto, two ballroom dance instructors, didn't even know how to spell MLM. Their friend called them, called Alberto, and he called Daphne. He said, there, 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 there's some business about M&Ms. He thought it was the candy. They'd never been in the business. And they saw that presentation and they believed. And along the way, Sarah and Jaime, Romanos, Garduño, Paula, these guys, right? They believed and all of a sudden, we were doing three million dollars a month in Mexico by a bunch of people who had never been in network marketing, no experience whatsoever, because they believed. And we have seen that in market after market after market. Somebody comes in, no experience, no training. They don't know how the compensation plan works. They don't really understand gel matrix technology, but they believe in the mission. They believe in what we do. They believe in Agile Cares. And they get excited. They get passionate. Five days, they're president's club. Somebody else comes in, and they believe it's hard. They believe people are conservative. People might think it's a pyramid. The products are too expensive. The place, I, the city I live in is too big. The town I live in is too small. The people I know aren't, they don't have money. They have a negative belief and they create a negative result based upon their belief just like the people with positive belief create the positive result with their belief. So it's funny, I wrote that, that blog, a guy got on the blog and wrote, well, you know, Randy, come on, what are you talking about, Dino? You, know, you think it's so easy, like, believe. You know, it, it, it's a fact. People are skeptical. It's hard to sponsor people. If you don't believe me, invite a hundred people to your house and see how many show up. It's hard. And you know what? Because he believes that, it's true. I'd love to help him. 
I'd love to show him how to break through. But you know what? Until he believes, there's nothing, nothing you or I can teach him. Now, I joined Agile, and I had a different belief. I had a belief that said, these products are the sexiest products that have been developed in network marketing in the last 15 years. This compensation plan is the most brilliant, innovative compensation plan that's ever been done in 60 years. This is a plan that rewards the proper behavior that causes people to go down and work in depth and support their teams. This is a company with good people with good values. This is an early opportunity. This is a chance to go out and create a legacy position. A position where you're locked in and you create that ongoing residual income that will set you up for life. And the first person I called was my sister and told her, sign up, we're going to get you locked up because her husband was dying. And we said, we're going to create an annuity for your kids. We're going to set up this legacy position so they never have to worry about college. They never have to worry about a medical bill. We're going to set them up for life. And because I believed that, it was true. So the guy who believes it's difficult, you know what? He's right. And me who believe the world desperately needs what we have, I'm right too. So what do you believe? Let me take you back, if I can, to when I was 15 years old. And I was sitting in a jail cell. I'd been arrested for armed robbery. I'd been a teenage alcoholic, teenage drug addict, never went to school, took the wrong path, hung out with the wrong crowd, needed money for drugs. So I started burglarizing places and, and robbing places. And then I got arrested. And I was sitting in that jail cell thinking... My whole world was over because all of a sudden this life choices I had been making didn't look so good anymore. And I heard some keys. It was a big metal door and it had a little yellow win uh, a, a little window with the wire that goes through the glass and I could, there was a clock out in the hallway. So all day, every day, I just sat in that jail cell and I looked through the window watching the clock tick. So one day, there's those keys in the door, and it opens, and a man who I don't know walks in, a man named Baxter Richardson, who was a school teacher, and the father of my best friend that I went to school with, he dated a girl, and, and this, he was the father of the girl that my friend David dated. And she had gone home and told her, Father, please go help Randy Gage out. He's in jail. He's in trouble. He's nowhere to turn. He needs help. Now, Baxter didn't even know me. So he got some, some of my files from school because his daughter asked him to. And when those keys turned and the door opened, he was the one that walked in my jail cell. And he introduced himself, and he told me something that I still remember as vividly this moment as I do, what, you know, what is that, 37 years ago or something? He said, you don't belong here. You are capable of great things. Wow. I don't belong here? I'm capable of great things? And I argued with him. No, you don't understand. I had drugs and alcohol and robbery and, you know, I just, I, you know, I've had this horrible childhood. I just, I mean, I just, I... And he said, no. I looked at your records. You know, you skipped school 
for three weeks, four weeks in a row sometimes. Then you go and you take a test, and you pass the test. You, you, you rank, your reading comprehension is higher than many people in college. You are capable of great things. You don't belong here. And you know what it saved me? Was, was that, was that I love to read. Because of course, as I was so mixed up, so messed up, so unhappy as a child, I just sat in my room and I read for hours and hours on end. Sometimes I read a book every day. So because I, had, I, I was a reader, that is what saved me. And that is what Baxter saw in me. That's what caused him to believe in me. And my life was so messed up. I so desperately wanted to believe what Baxter told me that I believed it. I borrowed the belief that he had for me. It's no different. It's the real life story of what you heard Craig talk about when he talked about the guy who went to the fortune teller. And the fortune teller said, oh yeah, you were Napoleon, you're going to do great things, you're going to be amazing. And so he believed it because he wanted to believe it. Because like me, he was a dishwasher who didn't want to be a dishwasher anymore. And because he believed it, it was true. I could only laugh when you were telling that story, Craig, because just yesterday before I flew in, I went to the Apple store on Lincoln Road Mall, and I'm walking on Michigan Street, and there's a, there's a fortune, a, a psychic. And as I walked by, she opened the door, and she said, would you like a psychic reading? And you know what I told her? <laughs> I said, if you were really a psychic, you would know. <laughs> right? <laughs> so I didn't fall for the same thing that this guy did, right? Because I said if she's psychic, she would know if I wanted a psychic reading, right? But isn't that funny how a psychic or a teacher or a counselor, a parent or a sponsor can tell us something? And we choose to believe it, or we choose not to believe it. Let me tell you the single most important thing you will ever do in your Agile career. You will find people to believe in. And you'll let them know that you believe in them. And you'll let them borrow the belief that you have for them until they develop their own. What does a great coach like Jeff do when he's working with that baseball team? He builds belief. What does a great leader like Niti Sawansap do? He builds belief. The most important thing you'll ever do is find those people. Let them know you believe in them. And nurture that belief. Let me tell you what I believe. I believe that Jeff and Jeremiah deserve the opportunity to run this company. I believe they've been here since day one. They have studied the profession. They have always fought for the field. They've become students of the profession. They're good people and their heart is in the right place. I believe they were the right choice to run Agile Enterprises. I believe that. I believe Agile can become a multi-billion dollar company, the leader of the network marketing profession.
Now here's the key. I believe Agile can become a multi-billion dollar company. That doesn't mean it will. Because it only will happen if not only that I believe that, but you believe that. Ann Feinstein, I believe when your sponsor quit the company, that was the seminal moment in your life when you decided to throw off the shackles and become one of the greatest leaders this profession will ever see. I believe that. Atta Mamedov, I believe you can be the next guy next year to win one of these top income earner rings. I believe that. <laughs> Billy Looper, I've been playing softball with you for more than 10 years. I have said for every one of those 10 years, if I was going to start a new team and I could pick one person to build that team around, the one guy I would pick first is Billy Looper because he's a champion. I believe that. My friends in Mexico. My friends in Colombia. Costa Rica. Argentina. All of Latin America. Let me tell you what I believe. I believe Latin America can be the biggest growth market in Agile for the next five years. Nando and Silvana, Ciccarellis, Dino, all you guys in Italy. You guys, I believe you're amazing. I believe you learned some lessons working for one of the first companies in our profession, and you became extraordinary leaders. And I believe that now that you have brought those leadership skills to Agile and combine what we have with what you have, you are going to be beyond brilliant. And you're going to set this world on fire. <laughs> Slovakia, Slovenia, Czech Republic, all the rest of Europe, all you guys in EU, I believe, see, I believe Latin America can be the greatest growth market in the next five years. But whether it will be, will be determined by whether those leaders in Latin America believe that. Because here's what I also believe. I believe EU could be the greatest, biggest, most dynamic growth market in Agile Enterprises in the next five years. I believe that. Now, whether that's going to come true, that's going to depend on you guys from Spain, on you guys from Czech Republic, on you guys from Lithuania, and all of those places. Shai and Yaffa, I believe you have some of the purest hearts in the company in the profession. I believe you'll do anything for your team because that's who you are. Kobe and Liel, I believe something happened. You always were successful with Agile. You remember, Kobe, you were making money fast. 
you were making money in month two, month three. You were making, you were making stupid money. You had success almost immediately. You know what I believe? I believe when you made the decision to go diamond, you and Liel made the decision to move from success to significance. And that's when it all changed for you. And you're out there working with your team, supporting your people, and I believe there's going to be great things because of you guys. Because of you guys. My friend, you know, Alberto and Daphne and Gardunos and Lokiers and all that, I believe in you guys. I know what you guys can do. <laughs> Jeannie Kidd. My friend Jeannie Kidd. I believe you're celebrating a birthday today. <laughs> Dave Liddy, I believe you looked amazing up on this stage. Derek Lloyd, I think you look great. The ladies are up here. Don't they look great? Don't they look like they could be up here as diamond directors the next time they come up here? I believe that. I believe... I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. Now, of course, I'm talking metaphorically, but I believe that I can do great things. I believe you can fly. I believe you can touch the sky. I believe you can do great things. And I believe that because I'm the guy up here wearing these rings. The guy who they had to go teach the Dr. Seuss to because he was so scared of people, so afraid of the world, so pathologically shy, so messed up but I changed the story. I decided the next chapter of the book didn't have to keep the same plot line as the last chapters. Julian Tim, I believe in you. My friends, all of you in this room, I believe in you because I know we can change the plot I told you I wrote that blog Josephine Gross from Network Marketing Networking Times she uh, she wrote on there now she speaks I don't know what would she speak like five languages something so she said fascinating topic that you have here because the Dutch word for believe let me make sure Ge, ge, gehoven, I think. Let me... Geloven. Geloven. The Dutch word for believe, you guys from Amsterdam, you can verify this, is geloven, which means, and loven is love. So when you believe, you put your love into something or someone. That's what we do with Agile. That's what we do with Agile Cares. You're going to hear more about it tomorrow. We got the walk of hope tomorrow morning. Let me tell you, I will be in that walk of hope, and I hope every person in this room will get your butt out of bed, pay that 35 bucks, and you be in that walk of hope with us because I believe it matters. Some of you know, one of my, my, my goals is to become a billionaire. Now, I've wanted to be a billionaire for a long time, 10 or 15 years. But you know, it all changed about a month ago. I was watching the footage of the famine down in Africa, Somalia, and those refugee camps. 
and the kids who no water to drink and no food to, to eat. And they're dying in these tent cities. And I said, you know, now I really, really, really want to be a billionaire. And the day I become a billionaire, I want to become an unbillionaire because I want to take that money and put it down in Somalia and help those kids. You know what? We do that every day with Agile Cares. And I assume Craig, probably you'll be talking about it tomorrow. Somebody will. Craig, okay. The, the cleft palate surgery and the club foot surgery and the cataract surgery and the microloans at the leper colonies. I believe that matters. So I go back to the question again. What do you believe? Do you believe Agile can be a multi-billion dollar company? Do you believe that what we do matters? See, we call that thing tomorrow the walk of hope. But you know what I would say? I think every time you go to a cash flow class, every time you go to a business briefing, that's a walk of hope too. Because we're walking to meet somebody and give them hope. That's what we sell. We don't sell EXO. We don't sell Ageless. We don't sell Comp Plans. We sell hope. And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and three quarter percent guaranteed. Now, all the Dr. Seuss, they have those kind of happy endings. It says success is guaranteed. But you know what? In the real world, when you're going to your cash flow class, when you're going to your ABB, when you're calling up your friends, your family, the success is not guaranteed. But if you believe, it's a pretty good chance. If you let other people know you believe in them, it's a pretty good chance. Let me tell you one more story. Once upon a time, there was a person with a dream. A dream to be free. A dream to live a life of meaning. A dream to move from success to significance. To help others to build belief, to nurture the dreams of thousands of other people. So this person joined a company called Agile Enterprises and began to build their dream. And it wasn't easy, and it wasn't guaranteed, and they faced some challenges. They faced some obstacles. But they still believed. They believed that challenges were stepping stones. That obstacles and problems and challenges were just lessons from the universe that were sent there to help them develop new skills, gain new wisdom, develop more belief. So they got on a plane, or they got on a train, or they got in a car, and they went to Agile World 11 in Salt Lake City, Utah. And they spent the weekend 
in a convention hall filled with other people who believed in belief. And they lived happily ever after. Woo!